Hi, I'm John Kennedy from Silicon Republic and today we're going to be looking at the Galaxy Alpha from Samsung. Okay, so this is the Galaxy Alpha, Samsung's new flagship device. It's a, an interesting 4.7-inch uh, smartphone because uh, it is probably probably the most luxurious looking device that uh, Samsung has, has yet brought out in the market. You know, in the past I might have said, you know, felt that devices that are usually covered in plastic tend to be, you know, don't feel like quality. I have to say this one really does uh, feel luxurious. It's uh, got a thickness of seven millimeters, uh, one of the thinnest phones I've probably held. It really has a, a really good feel in your hand. Uh, at the back here of the device, again, while this may be a, a plastic back to it, unlike say, for example, iPhones, which have a glass back to them, uh, you know, this feels good. It actually has grip. Uh, which is very good and you don't want to spend a lot of money on a phone and suddenly lose it uh, because it slips out of your hand. It's a 4G optimised device, it, it's capable of uh, download speeds of up to 300 megabits per second and uploads of about 50 megabits per second so it, could be, it has the potential to be quite a workhorse so in your working life it looks to part but also in your personal life it's quite snazzy, it's quite jazzy looking. The device itself, uh, it basically uh, is again optimised as well, as well to work with some of Samsung's actual uh, wearable devices like the Gear Fit and uh, the, um, the Gear Live or the Gear 2. So uh, again, it's pretty much in keeping so with, with the new range of devices that are coming out where you'll have a wristwatch or, or something that will monitor your health and you'll be able to communicate through the wristwatch as well and have the phone as a, as a companion to that. The display on the device is about uh, 1280 by 720 which on the face of it compares poorly with devices like the uh, iPhone 6 which has a, a display of something like uh, 1920 by 1080 so you know on the face of it it doesn't have the same quality of display as retina on, on the iPhone 6 which to some people might be a factor but I think to be honest I, I kind of not I don't get carried away with these gimmicks uh, around ultra high definition displays I think if it's good enough for the eye to see, if you're looking at good high, high definition photographs and, and you can see them perfectly and you can watch your videos in high definition, I, I, I think often some of these manufacturers tend to uh, trump up uh, features and call, give them names and brands just to sell phones. Uh, the thing that stood out for me most about this device was the camera. Um, I thought, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's got a 12 megapixel camera, uh, very easy to use. Uh, one of the nice things I like about it is the HDR folks uh, uh, HDR feature, which allows you to br basically use, uh, brighten up what would have been otherwise drab photographs and really give them a really uh, professional look and finish. Um, it also comes with a number of modes. Um, you know, you can uh, beautify the face if you want. You can uh, create panoramas, and you can also do an interesting feature called um, uh, tour mode or virtual tour, which basically again. Uh, allows you to basically create a set of photographs and videos that are, are just stunning. Um, it also comes with uh, the ability to record video in 4K. So if you do record a video and you want to really put it out there on the internet or on, on your TV at home, and if you have a 4K TV, uh, again, nice feature to have. The device itself runs on Android KitKat, uh, Android 4.4. Again, uh, the device comes with a uh, octa-core quad uh, processor so that's like two quad core processors inside it which is quite powerful really um, and again it, it's just blisteringly fast for a lot of things you want to do uh, a, a real workhorse I think basically to, probably to, to cram a lot of that in I'd say Samsung made a bet on maybe reducing the resolution and, and focusing more on, on, on the actual processing power inside a device. Uh, the battery power again I found really really uh, resilient um, again you know just what you want these days. You don't want a phone that you're going to have to charge every four or five hours. Um, you know, this device, you can charge it for one day or two days and it'll go. It's got a 12 hours uh, talk time, for example. It's really mu very much a workhorse. While I mentioned there that the resolution of the screen might be a drawback for some, I mean, certainly it might be some people use that as a, as a, as a no-no. I, I don't think it's, it's a factor at all. You will not be let down by the resolution on the screen. The only drawback really um, I found was uh, it doesn't come with a micro SD slot, which for a lot of people who do take pictures and stuff and uh, like to share their media, micro SD does matter a lot to people. Don't, don't think it doesn't, it actually does. 
Um, but that said, uh, internally the device comes with 32 gigs of, of, of storage. Uh, it has um, 2 gig of RAM and you know it's, it's pretty strong. The win-win on this device has to be the camera. Uh, I'm very impressed with the 12 megapixel camera and the HDR focus feature. Uh, really, really impressive. So the Samsung Galaxy Alpha, uh, it's been on the market since Friday the 18th of September. Uh, basically, the uh, device it comes in two colours, gold and charcoal black. Uh, this is the charcoal one, obviously. And uh, it's free, basically, with uh, Carphone Warehouse uh, 02 and 3 on contract. And there you have it, the Galaxy Alpha from Samsung. <laughs>